Kai Green is a celebrity in the bodybuilding world, constantly on call in the off-season for guest posing and various personal appearances all over the country. Kai's fans are eager to meet him, and he is well known for taking the time to get personal with everyone who shows up. So what does this have to do with arm training? Well, the person most likely to be escorting Kai to these events is dedicated Muscle Meds employee Adam Paz. Part chauffeur, part personal assistant, Adam is responsible for getting Kai to the appearances, making sure it goes smoothly, and getting him home, even if it means driving through the night. Though he has been bodybuilding for several years, recently Adam has been getting the itch to compete. So after he saw a few episodes of this video series, he asked the president of Muscle Meds if he could be the next to train with Kai. I've always been with Kai uh, since he actually signed with Muscle Meds. I've always helped him drive places and did demos with him and just did a lot with him as far as helping him out when it comes down to showtime and never really got a chance to train with him. So I saw these Train With Kai videos and I did a lot of, do a lot of social media for Muscle Meds. I was like, why not give me a shot? A guy from behind the scenes coming out training arms with him. Probably one of my favorite body parts. Kai and Adam begin with his usual 12 minute warm up. This is the same no matter which body part he's training. It is a time to visualize and focus on the task ahead. You know, you're preparing for, you know, your harvest. You know, you're priming, you know, your surface for something greater to come, you know. Kai then begins the session with wrist curls and reverse curls, two exercises that target the forearms. The camaraderie between these two men enables them to fall quickly into a comfortable rhythm as the training begins. I must mention that beginning the session with forearm exercises is somewhat unorthodox. Most people would leave forearms for last, fearing that by exhausting them, the grip for the following exercises would be weakened. That is the case, and I wouldn't recommend it for everyone. But as usual, Kai has his reasons for breaking the rules. And forearms are one of those areas I have to play catch up with. So in my training, arms, I have to train my forearms first before training my triceps and my biceps. So just like somebody was trying to bring up their calves to say the calves were far behind, you know, their leg development, they would have to train their legs, the calves first, you know, before training their quads and then the injury.
feel it? If you can feel it, let's get it. After this trio of pre-exhaust movements, Kai and Adam switch it up and move on to four sets of an unusually difficult tricep pushdown in which the grip is alternated, first underhand, then overhand. Switch it up. <clears throat> You'll notice that Kai and Adam aren't really talking much, not like in previous Train With Kai episodes. There you go. The reason for that is that arms really aren't that tricky to train, and there's not much to talk about. The only real problem comes when you use too much weight, lose focus, and begin to recruit other muscle groups to help, as we will see in a few minutes. Of course, genetics play a very big role in determining arm growth and shape, as with any body part. But the key to training arms is volume, lots of sets and lots of reps, followed by good nutrition, rest and consistency, the basic building blocks of bodybuilding. This may seem somewhat obvious and fundamental, but it is often forgotten in the search for the tip or the trick that will replace old-fashioned hard work. Kai has addressed this issue in a previous episode. A lot of people have these principles about overtraining and what overtraining is. Sometimes you have to overtrain in order to stimulate the muscles and build the mind and muscle connections enough to be in control of the muscles so you can work it efficiently. If not for overtraining, you won't be able to do it sometimes. So you have to just like bludgeon the muscle with stimulation, just bludgeon it. Bang, bang, rep after rep after rep after rep after rep. Now you got it. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Let me hand it for you. All right. Already, Adam is beginning to feel exhaustion set in and is doing his best to soldier on. 14, 15. Good job. Good job. But in typical Kai fashion, we're not nearly done yet. Overhead tricep extensions, followed by close grip bench press, round out this middle portion of the workout. Seven. Eight. Ten, one, eleven, twelve. Good, good, good. Oh man. Eight, seven, let's go. 
I have much sympathy for the participants in this series. It's their one shot to be in a video with one of the most prominent bodybuilders in the sport. They know these workouts will be seen around the globe, and of course they want to look good. But that often leads to using too much weight, which leads to a breakdown of form, and today, Adam has been no exception. His desire to keep up with Kai leads him to make the same mistake that just about every other Train With Kai training partner has made. Finally, during straight bar curls, Kai has to step in and stop him. Now, if this ever happens to you, then you have to do something different. You might need to drop, you can continue like this, or you can drop the weight try to make the movement cleaner, stretch it out at the bottom, squeeze it at the top. Because this stuff like this, if you do these, these reps, and this is the sets that you do with this quality, you may feel like you stimulate something. You may yeah. stimulate a little something. But ultimately, the development that you can really get, you won't even begin to tap, you won't even see it. And if this is all that you do, for the, the week, when it comes to your arm training, your bicep training, over time, the benefit that you would get, the results that you'll be able to see, will be reduced. Does that make sense? So if you do this, you could do this now, but if this is what you do now, you would wanna, in your mind, think about coming back to the gym later or at another time when nobody's around and nobody's watching you and you don't have to worry about trying to maintain you know expectations or meet other people's unrealistic expectations on you and sit there quietly on your own and take it through the full stretch maximum contraction full range of motion you know and walk through it for yourself um because you know this stuff this will feel good but it's not gonna it's not going to benefit you. First thing, you're staying here like this in this fixed position and you're doing this, you know? Your bicep needs to stretch, it needs to contract. It needs to stretch, it needs to contract. You're here like this, everything's in your front delt and your delts and you're here. You're doing these movements. Ah, it feels good, ah, ah, you get up, you pump, you feel like, ah, but you're not really training your bicep. So you might need to drop the weight, stretch, Squeeze, stretch, squeeze, that's it. We make it more complicated when we start thinking we need to handle more weight, more weight. The primary goal here is not to contract, not to lift weights. You're not a weightlifter. I'll never be a weightlifter. 
And for people out there that don't know what a weightlifter and a bodybuilder, what's the difference, I'm going to explain it to you. A bodybuilder is primarily concerned with contracting his muscles. He contracts his muscles against greater and greater amounts of resistance. By doing that, he's able to stimulate hypertrophy and make his muscles grow. A weightlifter is just concerned about moving weight. You know, and he can boast to you about how much he curls, how much he benches, you know. How much do you lift? You're a weightlifter. It's really not important to me. Primarily what's important to me is being able to make my muscles contract efficiently. So I'm gonna get a stretch and a contraction. And I'm gonna be in control of it throughout the entire range of motion. Does that make sense? Stretch, stretch, stretch. Contract, stretch, 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 contract. Nine, four, five, six. Oh. Oh. Now that might not look impressive to people at home. I'm a professional bodybuilder. I'm struggling contracting my bicep against 30 pounds of resistance, but somebody at home is like, I could do more than each curling. Okay, here, that's it. Stretch this, stretch this, lock your elbow here. That's it, don't let your elbow move. Yes, one. Stretch, 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 stretch. Two. Three. Four. Don't move your elbows. Five, elbow stay locked. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten, squeeze. Eleven, squeeze. Twelve, squeeze. Thirteen, squeeze. There you go. And I learned a lot based on what he said today and based on the weights that he was using. I pretty much go too heavy when it comes to weights. And I don't get the right form. I mean, yeah, he's four times the size of me. And he's pretty much doing the same weight I am. So I learned a lot in that, in that area as far as hitting the muscle right and more of contraction rather than worrying about the weight. The one message that has come through to me loud and clear, no matter which athlete I've worked with, Victor Martinez, Craig Richardson, Kai Green, and many others, is that even though they are strong and can move heavy poundages, the weight on the bar is secondary to how the exercise is being performed. If your aim is to compete as a bodybuilder, the main thing you should take away from this video series, besides inspiration, of course, is the knowledge of this very important difference between weightlifting and bodybuilding. In order to shape an award-winning physique, one must master this basic principle. If one's aspiration goes beyond the gym, the nightclub, or the beach, and reaches towards something greater, it is a lesson one would do well to heed. Now that Adam has trained with Kai, I don't think it's one he'll ever forget. Thanks. Mom's a waste. That's the best way to put it. Do you want to beef up? Get Carnivore, the world's first all-beef protein isolate. Carnivore delivers the muscle-building power of real beef to help you pack on slabs of muscle. 350% more concentrated than steak. 20 times the creatine of beef added to branched-chain amino acids for increased anabolic effect. ANRT to recycle aminos and minimize ammonia. Now available in four delicious flavors. Chocolate, cherry vanilla, blue raspberry, and fruit punch. Beef up your physique with MuscleMed's Carnivore, the most sought-after anabolic protein ever created.